More National Signing Day reports here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please uh, like this video, share it out there on social media, enjoy uh, the content, and of course, subscribe right here as we head out to the Pac-12 in Arizona State. And Michelle Gardner from Arizona Republic. Michelle, how are we doing today? It's been a busy day, but a good day. Busy day, but a good day. Okay, well, tell us why it's been such a good day. Did we have a number of... Um, players come in to the fold late? Well, Arizona State signed 10 players. Now that doesn't necessarily sound like a lot, but they're going for quality, not necessarily quantity. And Antonio Pierce, who's the recru recruiting coordinator, and Herm Edwards both said that they're keeping some what they call chips in their pocket because they expect the transfer portal to be very, very active this year. And as we know, this has not been any a normal year for anybody. They're keeping a lot of uh, chips in hand for future guys through the portal. Uh, there are a few more players they expect in February. So that's part of it. Okay. So we're looking at uh, the seventh ranked class in the conference, number 47 in the nation. But as you mentioned, with only nine signed, that number is typically in the low, high teens to low 20s. How high do we expect that number to get considering what they're trying to keep uh, in their back pocket for the transfer portal? Well, there are four players that didn't sign today, and two of those are four-star prospects. So I expect that rating. And, you know, you got to look at that one way or another. Uh, but I expect their rating to go a lot higher once they get those two four-star four prospects in the fold. So I think that's a big part of it. And one of those is the number one center in the country, uh, Ezra Dotson Oyatade out of Texas. And he's the number one center in the country. So that's going to boost their ranking if they do get him in the fold. So the other thing I think you, you got to look at when you're considering what teams are signing is that new rule where this is basically a free year. So anybody that wants to come back can come back. And Herm has said that he really expects 90% of his team to come back. So it's one thing to say, hey, you got way more players, but you still have to pay for their scholarships. And in this economic crunch that they're in right now, if you've got everybody coming back, maybe that's another reason they don't necessarily need to sign a whole lot of players. Okay. So while we await the top rated center in the country to most likely sign out of Texas. Uh, who do you like in this class out of nine? Well, there are a lot of actually really, really good ones. And the one player that Herm was talking about quite a lot was Jaden Williams. He's an outside linebacker from South Cliff High School in Texas. And he said when he looked at the film on this guy, he looked like he was playing at a speed faster than everybody else. And he kiddingly said that when he talked to Antonio Pierce, he said, hey, are you fast forwarding this? This guy can't be this fast. So they were talking about how this guy plays at another speed with another intensity than most other players. So that was the guy that they really, really talked quite a bit about. Another guy that they're really high on is Tommy Hill. He's a wide receiver cornerback out of Orlando Edgewater. Uh, and obviously when you get a guy that can play on both sides of the ball, that's a good thing because you can put him anywhere you need him, whatever fits your need at the time. So he's a four-star prospect too. They were very high on him. And obviously you can never have enough weapons when you're talking offense and you're talking Jaden Daniels, a quarterback. Yeah. Tommy Hill, the 13th rated uh, athlete in that category in the nation, as uh, Michelle mentions out of Orlando and uh, Jaden Williams, 28th at his position of outside linebacker, and the name Jaden has worked out for Arizona State in recent years. All right, anything in particular in regards to whether this has actually come out of Herm Edwards' mouth or just by your observation of his recruiting approach? We know that he is just a master at building relationships, gaining trust, connecting with young people. But in regards to the approach of whether that be a geographic region or – uh, anything like that that stands out to you? Well, they did say that they're going much more national when it comes to the recruiting footprint. When you look at the pl 10 players that they've signed, they come from seven different states. So, yes, they loaded up from California in the past couple of years, especially last year, but they really are going 
your footprint. You look at you in this signing class, and you got a kid from Philadelphia, a kid from Florida, kids from California, kids from Texas, kid from Louisiana. They really are leaving no stone unturned when it comes to uh, looking for the next best players. And the one thing that they said is their priority was getting stronger, taller, wider guys. You know, speed, speed, height, width, all of those things is what they're looking for. And their their priority was on offense and defensive line last year, and it's even more so this year. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down Arizona State, courtesy of Michelle Gardner on Arizona Republic, or write some tremendous material that I've caught up with here since I've uh, been talking to Michelle in the last year or so. So we appreciate her contributions. And uh, Michelle, uh, hope to see you soon. We'll have to, I, I don't know what the word is uh, following this 70 to 7 drubbing of Arizona about a bowl game uh, if Arizona State's interested in uh, continuing its season. Well, you know, Herm kind of mentioned it a little bit in passing on Monday. You know, if they win this, they can be two and two and go to a bowl game. I think for ASU, it would be beneficial given the large number of players that they've got coming back and the fact that they had three games canceled. But also, if you're going to drag this season out another two weeks, when they play, these players have gone what through what they've gone through, having to get up at 6 a.m. every day to get tested, We'll see if they want to play another two, three weeks, however long it's going to take. Arizona State's got its final date of the season at Oregon State on the road. ESPN game, 730 local time, 1030 on the East Coast. Uh, Michelle, appreciate you stopping by. Anytime.